Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm back again and it's time for another serious YouTube video. So I've kind of like contemplated doing this video because it's going to be quite hard for me to talk about it but I thought it would be just like you know a good kind of video to put out there in case it helps anyone because I mean I would have liked to have heard more kind of stories that related to me when I was going through this at the time so today I'm gonna be speaking about my coming out story and it doesn't just involve me there were other people kind of involved in my coming out process I obviously won't mention names because I'm not involved in their lives anymore and they're not involved in mine and I don't want everyone to sort of take my side of the story as like the the right side there's no like kind of right or wrong side it's just I'm telling you guys what happened with me, my experiences. I just want maybe people to gain something positive from my experience and maybe like I'll be able to help them. So I'll just get into the story. So I think I'm trying to remember how long ago it was. It was just after my second year of college and it was before the summer holidays so I think it was about maybe May time so about maybe 2015 May 2015 and I I've always known from a, like I would probably say first maybe first year like secondary school I knew that I knew that I wasn't like straight. I knew in myself that I wasn't like other people. Like I just knew it inside of me. And like I used to kind of I'd always be more interested in the girls, like in TV shows, like music, you know, films and stuff. So I knew I, I kind of like not I don't I always say this it's like I wasn't like the other kids because no one really spoke about it back then and I just didn't feel like I could say anything in secondary school because you know what kids can be like then I wasn't I was nowhere near popular in, in high school if I sort of came out then that I would get picked on and it would just it just wouldn't be good so I never really said anything in, in secondary school, I just kind of left it and it wasn't till my, yeah obviously my f first year of college, I, you know, I, I still knew myself but I still don't want to, I still felt like I wasn't ready and throughout my first year of college I became really close to someone and we became like really good friends within a really short period of time and within about I think it was within about like six months we went on holiday together and during that holiday I mean I started to sort of develop feelings for this person and obviously I knew I couldn't say anything because I was like well this is just gonna fuck up the friendship like I'm gonna lose my best friend and so I obviously didn't say anything just kept it to myself but the feelings just got like more intense as the friendship sort of like developed and it wasn't until the second year I I was like 
I need I knew I needed to say something but like I just didn't know the right time I didn't know how to say it I'd like never had to experience this before so I was working at this point and I think I must have been on a night out one night and one of my friends at the time from work I was out with and we were getting a taxi home together and I was quite drunk and I just spilt to her how I was feeling and like who I was, had feelings for and I basically just came out to her that night and I was like kind of thinking oh shit what have I done and I was like hopefully she won't remember in the morning like maybe she just thought it was like a drunk sort of thing but she did remember and she messaged me about it so that was kind of like me sort of out to one person and then there was also someone else in my work that I spoke to about it the, like she had come out to me so I was like right okay like maybe I can just tell her as well and I'll know some like at least someone kind of like understands me so there was two people that knew about it at the time and they knew for a couple of months or so and one of them in particular was almost kind of like pushing me to tell this person that I liked her and I because back then I was quite like naive and sort of would believe what other people said like I wouldn't really trust myself if that makes sense I would sort of like go on what other people said and I probably listened to people too much and at the time I probably should have realized that this person who was kind of trying to push me to tell uh, well to come out to this person and tell her how I felt probably didn't have the right intentions and maybe wanted to cause a fallout but unfortunately I listened to her and I was like right okay I'm, I'm gonna tell her so there was one night I stayed over at the, the girl's house the one that I liked and I was so nervous like I felt physically sick like I didn't want to eat I was gonna tell her at night but I couldn't I just I just couldn't do it so I didn't and the next morning we were meant to have college in the afternoon. We were just sitting having breakfast and I was like, come on, I need I need to do it, you need to do it in my head. And I don't know why I felt like I had to because this girl this other girl at my work had told me to. So I finally kind of plucked up the courage and called on my friend and she looked really worried. Like she was like, like what's wrong? What's wrong? And I basically just spill everything. Well, first of all, when I first came out, I came out as bi. Because for some reason I was too scared to fully come out as gay. I don't know why. Like, I really don't. I don't know. It just felt like too big a step for me. So at first I came out as bi. And I told her about the feelings. Which was really, that was the difficult part. That was the bit I just did not want to sort of say to her. But I knew I had to. Well, I didn't have to, but I had to eventually tell her at some point. And she seemed, like, she was shocked at the time. And, but she was fine with me. Like, she, she, she seemed okay with me. She was just trying to, like, asking a lot of questions, obviously trying to get her, like, head around it. I went home. And she was fine with me that evening once I left. And so I was, like, relieved almost because I was like oh my god like she's okay with it because I was so worked up about telling her I was like oh my god like this could go horribly wrong like I could lose my best friend so I was really relieved and I was quite happy and I ended up going home and coming out to my mum that night as well so that I thought oh my god everything's gonna be okay and I woke up the next day and I was scrolling through Instagram and a post by her had come up and it was, it seemed like it was aimed at me for sure. It was like an indirect kind of thing and it was like a quote 
or something. So that made my heart sink. I felt shit. So I instantly messaged her and was like, oh, are, are you okay? Like I saw your Instagram post and she was really blunt with me, like really, really blunt. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, was it about this situation? And she just kind of went, well, no, not everything has to be about you. And I was like, whoa, okay. Like what? So I just, I think, I can't remember what else was said that day, but basically anything I tried to say to her she was just blunt and really shitty about it so I just kind of left it and the Friday was the same I was just like well do you know what I'm just gonna have to leave it but that Friday night I was really really upset I honestly well actually the Thursday night as well because of the answers I thought everything was fine but it wasn't um so I, I ended up like basically cry myself to sleep the Thursday night, cry myself to sleep the Friday night and I was just thinking the worst, I was like oh my god, I was like this isn't going to be okay, like oh it was just, it was awful, I can't even describe how I felt to be honest and on the Saturday I had to go into work and I was on with one of the girls who kind of knew about the situation, the one who kind of understood where I was coming from and I just burst into tears I like broke down and she was like it's okay it's like come to the staff room so like she took me to the staff room sat me down got me a glass of water and I just told her what had happened and she tried to like you know calm me down I was I did I honestly had no idea how I was going to work after that but it was kind of a nice distraction you know just to get away from just doing nothing like and to not be on my phone because the phone my phone was a negative really really negative thing at that sort of time for me because obviously I was like seeing stuff on social media like not being able to message this person so we went like the whole Saturday without speaking and same on Sunday as well she didn't speak to me either and it wasn't till because so, it, it, I was like, okay, I need to give her some space. This is probably like really weird for her to get her head around. And I didn't think of myself at all during this time. Like all I could think about was, oh my God, is she okay? What What's she thinking? And like, I couldn't give a shit about myself. I was, I was coming out and the last thing I could have cared about was my feelings and my emotions. All I cared about was everyone else around me. So... It was the Sunday night and she, I think she messaged me first and was like, look, can I phone you? So I was like, yeah, okay. And I was so nervous. I felt so sick. So I was like, I have no idea what she's going to say to me. So she phoned me. I went upstairs and I can't remember some of the things she said. Honestly, it was a blur because all I done for the first like 15 20 minutes of that phone call was cry no words came out of my mouth she was just like saying what she felt to me and I was crying like I've never cried so much in my life and I listened to what she was saying and I couldn't speak because I was just in a state on the phone and I just oh I just remember it so well like I'm just gonna get a bit emotional but like I remember it so well just how much I cried because of all these things she was saying and um, we ended up like you know speaking it through and we sorted it out like we spoke through it and we ended up like joking about it towards the kind of end of the phone call and I was like okay everything's gonna be okay like obviously she was like yeah it's gonna be a bit weird for a while but it'll be okay so we ended up being fine like I saw her the next day because we had college and, and it was okay like I, I was really nervous to see her in person I was honestly so scared but it was okay it wasn't it was absolutely fine like it was almost as if it hadn't really happened. For like what she had said, like she did say a lot of horrible things when 
when um, I told, well, when she was angry with she said a lot of horrible things to me and it hurt me really, really bad. Um, but this girl from work seemed really angry that I'd like made up with her again, which now that I look back and I'm like, mm, her intentions were not right at all. It was almost as if she wanted me to tell because she knew it would cause a fallout. So I don't speak to this girl anymore from my work. I mean, I didn't cut her out of my life completely until there was like a night out. I think this the, this must have been like six months. And everything was fine between me and this girl who I liked. We were fine, we were like back to sort of kind of being normal again. Like I wouldn't say it was like what it was before, but it was still relatively like, we were relatively close. And it was, I think it was six months later, there was like this party with my work and I took the girl, my best friend at the time, along to it. And basically something was said and the girl who forced me to like kind of tell this girl how I felt, they didn't really like each other, they didn't get on. Something happened there and I ended up falling out with both of them on that night and that's when I caught this girl from my work off completely. I didn't speak to her and I don't want to be involved with her so we didn't speak and me and the other girl, that well my best friend, we were fine the next day like we were laughing about it so it was fine but that was kind of, I mean we stayed friends, me and this girl, and I still obviously had feel I had to get over feelings really bad, so I had to get over them, which, which was shitty. Like this is what I feel. I was like the this girl. It was almost as if she didn't consider my feelings at the time because I was the one that had to get over them. So I just you know it, I just thought it was really shitty of her. But anyways, we stayed friends for the third year of our, our college. Towards the end of college, it wasn't the same. We kind of, it was almost as if we started like drifting apart. And yeah, we ended up like, it was a mini argument. It wasn't like an argument argument that got too heated, but it was like a little bit heated. And after that, we just didn't speak. And I've never heard from her since. And to be honest, I am much more happier now that she's not in my life. Like I got over, my feelings like basically once she was out of my life and what I done was I just deleted her off of every social media, deleted her contact, deleted all the photos I had with her because I was like there's I don't want to look back at these photos and just you know relive some well obviously we had good memories but some I think the negative memories for me sort of kind of overtook a little bit so I just like deleted everything. It was almost like I just deleted her from my life because I was like, I don't need that negativity. That's That was kind of like my really sort of like dramatic kind of coming out story. I mean, it was, it was something, like something from a movie, to be honest, like for me. And I mean, obviously at the time I was really upset and it was really hard for me because of that situation, but now that she's out of my life like I'm so much more happier within myself and like I can finally start accepting myself for like who I am and like, I, I'm gay like I, I know I came, came out as bi but towards I think it was maybe like six months or take six months to a year after I came out as bi I was like mm, I'm not interested in guys at all like so I I was like, no, I'm, I'm gay. So that now I'm fully comfortable with myself, and my mom and sister are completely fine with it. Like, they they were really chill about it. Like, which I'm really relieved at. And when I moved down to uni, the girls that I share a flat with, they're all so so accepting of me, and it's just so nice to have like those people you can feel comfortable speaking to around it like and also there's my one of my other friends from uni and college she was at the same college as me too she's just great as well so like we all all of my friends are just so accepting of me and my friends from back home too 
So it's nice to have friends who just love you for who you are. I, I mean, I did have things that helped me through it. Like that's when I started sort of getting into Rose and Rosie at that sort of like time and they're just amazing like if you haven't checked out their channel like please go and check out the channel like their relationship will just give you so much feels and then you'll be like okay I know I'm gonna be happy one day like I just look at them and like they're happy I'm gonna find that one day so it's really nice to sort of look at them and look up to them and have such amazing role models so that's where I'm going to end the video on that note, so I hope this maybe could help someone, you know, you never know, but even just listen to the story, and yeah, thank you for listening, and I will see you guys in my next video, bye!